Hi, this is Feed Me, also known as Spore, and I'm in the studio in LA, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about bass resampling. Yeah, I mean, when I, when I started producing uh, drum and bass, I was often stuck for CPU, so an easy way to work was to always resample. Um, but I also found quickly that having a library of these sounds to be able to go back into at any given point was an extremely useful way of getting ideas down quickly, because you have your own archive of, of stuff you can draw from that you know is original. Um, and you tend to start picking favorites, things, things that just work. Now, I still have everything archived bass-wise I've ever made uh, going back to 2005. <laughs> uh, of varying quality, but there'll be... Uh... Anything from like working with distorting 808s repeatedly. These are all kind of reiterations of the same sound, starting with the first level of distortion. gradually refining the sound and, and making it something that I have to do less and less work on to fit into a track when I actually want to use it. Okay, so what I've done is I've printed out, this was the original sound that we made in Serum with some like basic distortion, some compression, kind of squishing it down a bit um, and scooping out the middle. Uh, I've bounced that out, so it's now audio and I've moved it into its own sampler window and cross-faded the end with itself, so it's now an infinite loop, so holding the key right now. Now that allows me to kind of start playing with it again. So FL Sampler has its own filters within, so there's always the option of just starting to reapply more modulation. Uh, with, this, with this sampler, the looping allows me to kind of start playing with the pitch when I actually start writing it into a track. So. When I'm writing bass lines, I'll often draw in very quick pitch adjustments to the start and end of notes, kind of to get them to drop off in that way. So again, the same way you would kind of play and exp express playing bass. Tiny moments like that can make the difference between something that sounds very static and something that starts to kind of actually make you want to dance, which uh, I think is supposed to be the point of this, right? You're supposed to dance. <laughs> um, so now I've got now I've got the sound to this level. I could start. I mean, the first thing I'll do normally is just run it back through the same processing it already went through and just see what happens. It could, sometimes it's a disaster, and sometimes you save yourself hours because it works. This was a disaster. <laughs> so again, I can, I can basically start re-adding on more effects and keep taking the sound further. But, it depends. Part of also the process is also kind of knowing when to stop as well. So hence why I bounce out regularly and in my library of sounds I've got kind of endless iterations of the same sound so I can always kind of go back to one that's less affected. So I can start to kind of play around with the things I had before and see if there's anything else I can squeeze out of this. I'm always quite unconscious of keeping this area relatively empty in these sounds. So when it, if it starts to become too full, you're going to quickly like lose definition and you're not going to have that actual clean low end that actually defines it to your ear as a bass noise. Otherwise, it's just going to start to become like this growl. It just sounds like an over-amplified guitar. There's going to be too, too much mud and harmonics, and so don't do that. Now we've got a bit more processing on it, I can kind of go back and add some... Um... The sampler will also let you do in-sampler really simple pitch automation. Um, in terms of aggression, uh, a quick slide at the start of a bass noise can kind of give it like an extra punch that 
I think a lot of people think that's done with compression. And often it's, the pitch is much more important to, to demonstrate. This is a little bit harsh. Adding distortion to a sound will often start to make it harsh to your ears. Your ears are most sensitive around four and a half thousand hertz, which is about the pitch of a baby crying, which makes evolutionary sense. Um, if you find that the sound's too oppressive, if it sounds oppressive at normal studio volume, you're going to make people's ears bleed on the dance floor, and that's my least favorite thing about when someone's not compensated for that in their mix. So I'm still Feed Me. That was some approach to bass resampling. See ya. Thank you.